now we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, namely a joint debate on Afghanistan. And again, this is an uh, initiative, again by Mrs. Fortega, on the partnership between the EU and Afghanistan. And Ms. Fortega has drafted a report on the partnership agreement between Afghanistan and the European Union. Uh, I'd like to start by giving the floor to the rapporteur, Ms. Fortega. Uh, you have the floor for four minutes. Thank you, Chair. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, the cooperation agreement or partnership and development between EU and Afghanistan was signed in February uh, 2017, uh, partial, uh, partially and provisionally entering into force uh, on December 1st, uh, 2017. It was open the Council decision uh, that uh, the agreement remains mixed one, meaning that uh, both EU and member states are engaged in the process of ratification. The situation in Afghanistan, security situation of, uh, uh, in Ag Afghanistan remains difficult, yet uh, it is over 56 uh, percent of its uh, territory that is under control of Afghan uh, government and uh, that means that more than 65 percent of population is also under control of the government. Uh, since 2002, uh, when uh, the EU engaged in financing uh, um, more than 3.66 billion euro of humanitarian aid was delivered there and for, for the decade of transformation starting 2015, uh, we intend to deliver further 1.4 billion uh, euro to, to stabilize uh, this country. Efforts of uh, ISAF, uh, NATO, NATO Operation ISAF and current uh, resolute support with participation of many countries including my own countries uh, brought uh, uh, development to, to security situation and although we still have uh, after emergence of ISK uh, the the, the da Daesh uh, uh, cells and groups uh, that emerged after, after um, operations in Iraq uh, uh, makes this situation still very vulnerable and fragile. Uh, the CA, uh, uh, CAPD focuses on uh, um, uh, the areas that are related to rule of law, good governance, uh, human rights, economic uh, stabilization and uh, um, uh, social stabilization. We have to acknowledge and complement uh, good achievements that uh, were um, reflected in statistics. Uh, the access to healthcare due to European assistance uh, increased from 9% to 57%. That means huge development. Life expectancy from 45 to 60. It also the level of education, schooling, access uh, to, to schools is much higher, voting uh, patterns, participation in elections and empowerment of women uh, means also achievements in, in uh, this country. Uh, the um, uh, agreement was signed by Federica Mogherini, uh, Vice President Hai Rep, uh, and Minister of Finance of Afghanistan in presence of uh, uh, the President of uh, this uh, country. 
Um, uh, we regret, we parliamentarians uh, regret that information about proceedings, uh, negotiations of uh, the agreement came to, 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 to this chamber considerably late. Uh, after signing of the agreement, although our role is uh, according to treaties high, we participate in consent uh, procedure of this uh, agreement. Uh, I welcome it, I support it, and, and I hope that uh, uh, it will be voted positively. Thank you. Thank you very much. And now on behalf of the uh, Committee on Development, I'd like to give the floor to uh, the Commissioner. Thank you, Mr. President, Honourable Members. Let me start by thanking you, Honourable Rapporteur Fortiga, for your report, your positive opinion, and the consent expressed on the conclusion of the European Union Afghanistan Cooperation Agreement on Partnership and Development. After decades of war, Afghanistan stands at the crossroads. Last year was the deadliest ever for civilians since the start of the war in 2001. And yet, 2019 could be the year of peace. In these years, the European Union has engaged even more closely with the government of Afghanistan to accompany the country in this delicate moment of its history. This is the goal that we have set both in the Afghanistan strategy of 2017 and in our latest Council conclusions. This agreement represents the first legal framework governing EU-Afghanistan's relations and is the result of a long negotiation process. The agreement is now applied provisionally and we already had a promising start of our structured dialogue and cooperation. Two bilateral meetings took place in 2018 where we discussed a number of key issues that we have agreed together with our Afghan friends. These include human rights, gender issues and good governance, development cooperation, trade, regional cooperation and migration. On all of these files, Afghanistan wants to make substantial progress for the benefit of its citizens, and we Europeans have offered assistance and support. We paid special attention to the situation of Afghanistan refugees in the region. The European Union uh, remains committed to work towards finding a comprehensive and durable regional solution by supporting the predictable, safe, orderly and dignified return of Afghan nationals residing in neighboring countries and to continue to implement the EU's regional programs on migration and forced displacement. In your report, you drew a realistic picture on the situation in Afghanistan. I would like to elaborate a little more on the current developments related to peace. The situation on the ground remains worrying. Innocent Afghan men, women and children continue to suffer from this conflict. Yet there are good reasons to hope that this year could finally bring good news for the country. President Ghani's peace offer for the Taliban in February 2018, just a little over a year ago, has created an unprecedented opportunity for peace. And since September last year, the U.S. and the Taliban are negotiating international troop withdrawal and counter-terrorism commitments. We know that lasting peace will take time. A quick agreement is not necessarily a lasting one. This is why the European Union is committed to support Afghanistan before, during and after a peace agreement to ensure that peace will be sustainable. Last November, at the Geneva Ministerial Conference on Afghanistan, hosted by the United Nations, High Representative Mogherini made a concrete five-point offer 
to Afghanistan about how the European Union could support a peace deal. First, we can help make the peace process more inclusive. Second, we can assist with reforms, including in the security sector. Third, we can help with the reintegration of former fighters and their families. Fourth, we can act as a guarantor of a possible peace agreement. And fifth, we can promote regional trade and connectivity. Since then, we have been working closely with our Afghan partners to better define our assistance. We are launching a dedicated peace mechanism to help prepare and build capacities for inclusive negotiations. As the High Representative said in Geneva, the Afghan people are asking to move forward and there is no going back. During the coming months, we will continue to work together with the international community to support a better electoral process for this year's presidential elections in Afghanistan. As you rightly pointed out in your report, the EU committed a large amount of funding in terms of development aid. At the Brussels Conference on Afghanistan in October 2016, the EU and its member states pledged 5 billion euros, and this pledge is currently being operationalized. Let me also mention the fact that the EU development support for Afghanistan has a strong focus on peace and state building and supports Afghanistan in its regional context. With other development partners, we are exploring how to adapt the existing development programs to a peace scenario. This would include supporting post-conflict reforms, social cohesion at community level, and cross-border trade and regional connectivity. Afghanistan has a unique chance for peace. We Europeans will do all in our power to help the people of Afghanistan turn this opportunity into a truly sustainable and lasting peace. Thank you. Dziękuję. Dziękuję bardzo, Pani Komisarzu. Następnym mówcą ma być... Thank you very much, Commissioner. The next speaker should be Mr. Engel, but I don't see him in the chamber, so we'll give the floor to Mr. Langer, who will be speaking on behalf of the uh, Trade Committee. Thank you, Mr. President, Commissioner. Well, the situation today is rather absurd. We're supposed to approve an agreement that is provisionally in force and has been for a year. But there's no transparency at all in the negotiating procedure. Now, if it wasn't about Afghanistan, I'd say this is not a way to treat the European Parliament. So to the Commission and the Council, I have to say the following categorically. It just won't do for an agreement to be implemented temporarily or, uh, without the democratic approval of this House. This doesn't meet the requirements of any conception of democracy. No agreement can be put into force to, uh, for an interim period without the agreement of the European Parliament. That is a general principle for Council and Commission. We are the democratically elected citizen EU. We have the right to be involved transparently and uh, to be consulted before the entry into force of anything at all. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Langer. Mr. Zdrojewski. I'm not in agreement. Ta zgoda jest niezbędna. Cieszę się, że... I do not agree with the previous speaker, but I understand that we have to find a solution. I'm delighted that the Foreign Affairs Committee has now tabled a proposal, and I'm looking forward to the first uh, official cooperation then between the EU and Afghanistan. This report's very good. It covers strategic issues, the responsibility of regional actors. It also so looks into building peace in Afghanistan. It's also about 
building a state in Afghanistan. Human rights are also mentioned because they are often not respected there. It covers trade and economic aspects, but what's particularly important here are migration processes. Afghanistan is worried about migration from Pakistan or Iran, so it is good that this report also talks about cooperation. Mr. Fonzulica. Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, the cooperation agreement on partnership and development confirms the EU commitment to Afghanistan future development during the decade of transformation 2014-2024 and lays the foundation for the Union's continued support for the country in implementing key reforms. Through the report, I am trying also to raise a flag that despite the significant progress made, Afghanistan still faces substantial challenges that require further strong and long efforts to safeguard and build on these joint achievements. I also put emphasis on a more constructive dialogue on human rights, in particular the rights of women, of children, ethnic and religious minorities, which are essential elements of this agreement. The agreement aims to develop EU-Afghan relations in a growing range of mutually beneficial areas such as rule of law, fighting terrorism and extremism, improved governance, achieving sustainable peace and development, combating terrorist financing, countering narcotics smuggling, fostering inclusive and sustainable economic growth and social and rural development, and addressing global challenges such as climate change. Ladies and gentlemen, Afghanistan needs to refrain from involving proxies in their rivalries in the country. The neighboring countries should contribute to the stability of Afghanistan, instead undermine it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please speak, stick to the speaking time now, Mr. Ostrovice, two minutes. First of all, let me to thank Anna Fotiga for her excellent job in making this report uh, being presented to us uh, for our attention and consideration. The EU-Afghanistan Cooperation Agreement on Partnership and Development uh, brings EU relationship uh, with Afghanistan to a new qualitative level of mutually beneficial cooperation. Undeniably, Afghanistan has made a very significant progress in many fields, rightly mentioned by Anna before. However, security concerns, corruption, human rights issues and other problems still persist, endangering the current achievements. Afghanistan is at a crucial point in its history as absent further efforts, all of the progress and sacrifices hitherto could be wasted. Withdrawing coalition forces prematurely could have negative consequences and should be decided by all consulting allies. The European Union is committed to a long-term partnership with Afghanistan. Therefore, following the November 2018 Geneva Conference on Afghanistan, the European Union announced a financial package worth of uh, 474 million to support state building and public sector reforms, health, justice and elections as well as to address migration and displacement challenges in Afghanistan. I hope that this agreement embedded in a regional approach, which includes Afghanistan neighborhood, the global powers and the international community can pave the way for a better future of the country. The first step to the path of stability is peace. Achieving a peace agreement between a Warring parties in Afghanistan is a priority at the moment. And I hope very much that the Qatar process of negotiations will include Afghanistan government in the very essence of this meaning. In particular, a peace deal cannot compromise the values of democracy, human rights and rule of law. The citizens of Afghanistan deserve this. Thank you, Chair. Dziękuję bardzo. Jeszcze raz proszę o trzymanie się czasu. Teraz pani Lösing, półtorej minuty w imieniu GUE. Bardzo panią proszę, bitę. Es ist gut, wenn Ziele eines Abkommens mit Afghanistan unter... It is a 
a, a good thing that if we can we can have an agreement to overcome poverty and to implement the sustainability goals and uh, have discussions as equals. But it's not as if we had no experience with the uh, neoliberal so-called reforms. And this is the agreement that we're discussing today. In 2003, um, the, I double, the IMF introduced an, uh, radical changes to the economic system. Uh, a number of studies and the experience of years has proven that this kind of uh, concept is simply inappropriate to improve the social situation of the population and to lead to stabilization. Uh, the current situation in Afghanistan is a disaster, but I fear that the agreement with its uh, demand for uh, direct foreign investment, uh, the private sector, and uh, the exploitation of natural resources uh, will not help this country to get back on its feet, uh, but rather will uh, serve uh, European companies. And the agreement also uh, talks about uh, something that I would really like to stress, informally uh, ag agreed way forward, uh, uh, which sends uh, African refugees back to death, and uh, we need to stop this practice immediately. Thank you very much. And now, uh, Mrs. Gomez, for one minute. In the last seven years, the alliance in ISAF and, and other missions such as CEPOL wanted to, to give a voice to those who were oppressed by the Taliban, the mi mi minorities and one particularly. We learned a bloody lesson in uh, Afghanistan that there can be peace within inclusion that, or, with, or if you hand over power to, to a warlord, but, but the negotiations for an agreement between the Taliban and uh, the Trump government is most worrying. They just want to withdraw troops as quickly as possible. They don't include civil society, women, anybody else, not even the government. The achie hard-won achievements are under threat. And uh, it might mean that most of the Afghan population, women and children, will be barbarically oppressed. This isn't real negotiation. This is betrayal. Look at the growing number of uh, Taliban attacks against civilians and others. And uh, the EU Union is uh, negotiating this agreement, which isn't worth the paper that it's written on. We need to do something about this. There is a a return to the dark edges of the country and all the efforts, the humanitarian aid, the, the casualties of allies, uh, Europeans and Afghans will be in vain if we don't do something properly. Thank you very much. Mrs. Gill for one minute. The agreement between the EU and Afghanistan and do believe that it would have been better had the parliament been informed earlier about the negotiations, particularly covering uh, trade and investments. However, being mindful of the fact that Washington is no longer pressing for a military advantage means that it, there's an opening up of space for diplomacy and EU, we need to support political resolution for the conflict in Afghanistan. But I have a number of questions to the Commission. The US and Taliban negotiators have reached a draft peace framework in Qatar, but it has not been disclosed if it contains assurances about the rights of Afghan women or minorities. Given the EU's efforts to enhance women's participation in public life, how are we going to ensure that this will not be in vain and, and, and once the Taliban have a political role again. Secondly, there is no regional um, agreed framework corresponding to the Doha talks. Neither the US nor Afghan government can lead it. How do we ensure sustained interest by regional powers and neighbors like Pakistan, China, India, and Iran in a stable state? And finally, how do we ensure that Afghan government plays a core actor in the dialogue in Afghan peace process? Thank you. Thank you very much. And now catch the eye, Mrs. Ward. 
EU member states continue to consider Afghanistan a safe country. This allows them to return to the country people who have come to Europe to seek asylum, often through very dangerous routes. However, the security situation on the ground has severely deteriorated and the Taliban now control a significant part of the territory. It is hy hypocritical and irresponsible for our member states to be sending these people back to a land where they will inevitably face persecution, especially those who came to seek shelter in Europe after being targeted for their cooperation with Western forces. Another worrying issue is the current exclusion of women and young people from talks that could lead to a peace deal between the US and the Taliban. My colleague Anna Gomez brought an important initiative to our attention last week whereby a group of Afghan women have launched an appeal regarding those who are currently excluded from the talks. It's essential that their voice is heard in order to build sustainable peace and to safeguard women's hard-won rights in the country. Thank you very much. Now, Mrs. Lalonde. Monsieur le Commissaire, chers collègues. Commissioner, colleagues, an agreement has been concluded between the Taliban and the USA uh, just a few hours ago. And though, in fact, no later than yesterday, the Taliban attacked a CAF, an Afghan um, uh, company of 55, 17 were wounded, and um, 40 were taken prisoners. And there are many other examples. The Taliban always refused to negotiate with the Afghan government, despite its repeated requests. This, uh, these Taliban are increasing their attacks against the government, and uh, the government only controls f about 50 percent of the area. So they're planning a return to power at a national level because the executive is increasingly weak. So that's clear regression for the rule of law and fundamental freedom for Afghans, and particularly Afghan women. The whole of Afghan society is worried at the idea of another ta Taliban regime which will destroy freedom of Afghans, such as happened in the, in the 90s. European Union, for its own credibility, cannot afford to allow this uh, after 20 years of investment in Afghanistan. Commissioner. We can't let the Afghans uh, leave the Afghans at the mercy of the Taliban, even if it's in the name of peace. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 So we're discussing Afghanistan, the historically ungovernable, impossible state, and the EU. And again, really, really with the right intentions, he's looking at billions of euros, offers to help with state building, social programs. But there's the word state building, to try and get to democracy and so on. Now, Russia, the United States and the British Empire have all failed to try and impose themselves upon Afghanistan. And I don't think there's any change to make us suggest that anything will be any different if this place, through its soft power, tries to impose itself on Afghanistan. I would suggest the best way to improve the lot of the people of Afghanistan is to agree to have tariff-free trade, to open the border to trade completely with them and allow their economy to grow and people there to get better off, better educated, through trade and the economic growth that will come with free trade. Everything else is doomed to failure. Thank you very much. And uh, the last speaker is Mr. Castaldo. Grazie. Thank you, President, colleagues. Afghanistan, despite the fact that uh, it has to be something that's close to our, our hearts, we have to think about it, not only because of all of the fallen who have come from the allied countries in the last years and have sacrificed their lives. So today I'd like to remember them. Having said that, Afghanistan, like the EU, needs an agreement that supports bilateral political dialogue to strengthen stability in the country and place the rights of citizens, the rule of law, reform of justice, de sustainable development and fight against corruption at the centre. There's a great deal of uh, change and the Afghan strategy has to be win-win with benefits for all regional actors. If they're not involved with the EU's efforts, the neighboring countries, it won't be sufficient. 
and it will be much harder. Quite apart from stability, the agreement also allows for special monitoring of funds. That's crucial for us to ensure that the funds are truly used to the benefit of local population. Now, it's a difficult path ahead, but this is a good first step. We've got to keep the door open for a better future for the people of Afghanistan. Thank you very much. And now, just to conclude the debate, uh, Commissioner Mimitsa. Members, allow me to thank you for this useful debate. I conclude that we should pursue the implementation of the cooperation agreement with Afghanistan and the overall EU effort to support Afghanistan. This is especially important in this moment where increased commitment from all the international community is needed. We will keep the European Parliament associated and informed about our ongoing work and dialogue. Thank you. Thank you very much to the Commissioner and now to the Rapporteur, Mrs. Fotiga. Our colleagues, uh, uh, the CAPD is the first ever legal base for relationship between the EU and Afghanistan. It is uh, to remain uh, in place, in force, presumably for the next uh, decade. Uh, we have to, to use it to full extent to, to, to further provide uh, uh, peace, stability, security and development, uh, so, social sustainability uh, to this country. The task is really difficult. I would like to thank all shadow rapporteurs, uh, all persons contributing to, to this uh, uh, report, uh, advisors of my political group, uh, staff of, uh, naturally staff of AFET and, and my own assistants. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you very much. Uh, that concludes uh, the joint debate. Uh, the vote will be held tomorrow morning. I'd like to thank all participants in the debate.